Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. We're just going to give it a few minutes to let everyone join. Welcome to the Synergy um, Software Open Forum session. Lucy and I are here. Um, we do have one question right off the bat. So when you're ready to start, Rupali, I'll, be the, I'll give you that question. Okay. I'm trying to get out. There we go. Okay. So um, I will... I will just minimize my PowerPoint and bring my program up. Okay. So um, we can we can take the questions and then once we run out of questions, I also brought a short case today. Um, and we could maybe as a group, it's a small group today, we could work through um, the case and um, see what sorts of features are in the program to help us analyze the case. So Lucy, if you want to give me the first question. Okay. Does SHS have an area somewhere that shows what subclass, class, family, et cetera, is given um, a given plant remedy fits in a list format? Um, so not, um, so first of all, the subclass superclass information is very new and um, it is um, uh, the scaffolding and a lot of the information in there is ready, but not all of it is ready. It's still being worked on. Um, and um, I think that uh, we will shortly uh, be getting the subclass, uh, superclass information uh, within the program. Uh, I think that there will be a top level, um, sort of uh, top level material or materia medica available for that, that will be just part of um, maybe the kingdom section. I don't know exactly where it's going to go and that will be available for all. And then I believe that there is more detailed level information that is available for purchase. Um, I do not have exact dates for when the superclass subclass information will be available within the program, but we can try and get some more clarity on it when we come back to you in January. Um, in terms of the location, I'm not sure that we, it, it is very possible that it might appear here in VQ notes, um, especially, um, you know, the subclass information may uh, come here under plants. Um, the superclass information may or may not be here, but as you can see, this is not in a list format, but it is um, hyperlinked and it's clickable. Uh, and I think that we may end up reorganizing this under uh, subclasses. Um, but as I said, I know that we're getting it because we have spoken with Dr. Shankaran and that work is going to be reflected within the program. <laughs> I just don't um, know at this point how it's exactly going to appear. Um, but if you're um, in general interested in um, families and kingdoms, uh, there is information here in the kingdom graph section. Um, and you can come in here and you can look at um, the plants overview. And then we have, you know, um, different approaches and different authors that have looked at plants also um, just from a taxonomy information but also you know we have Scholten, we have Yakir, um, let me move my zoom bar, uh, we have obviously Dr. Rajan uh, Shankaran, we have Massimo and he's updating all his information. So this is one place where you could um, go for example to look at the different family level information. The other place that you could also go is, um, I will just put one rubric in to show. You can also find the family level information here. 
um, when you're uh, repertorizing. And for example, if you wanted to just look in your repertorization and see if um, the family uh, of Kofia, uh, what are the remedies of the family Rubiaceae here, then you could just go to Kofia, which is the first Rubiaceae remedy we see. Uh, and it is, you know, very well known for mind activity, obviously. And you say, view remedies family. All I did over here was to do, was to hover over Kofia and do what appro approximates in the Mac for a right click. It would be a right click in a PC. And then in the Mac, you would do a control click or a two finger tap on your trackpad. And I do that and I come down to view remedy family. I think I moved too fast. Um, and you can see here that then you can limit with um, any level of grouping that you would like. So uh, if you look at Cronquist plants, you can limit by the subclass Asteridae uh, or the order Rubialis or the family Rubiaceae. And when we do that, you can see that there are four Rubiaceae remedies um, that appear in the rubric mind activity. So this is another way to do uh, family level classification or family information here in the program. Thanks, Rupali. And mm -hmm. of course, there's also the, with that same menu, you can go to view remedy in the reference library. And many of our uh, library of books yes. have the great family information like the Weichmann and so source and substance. So right. yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, another question, if you would please Rupali show people how to make the choice, the view choices stick in repertory module. Uh, a, Somebody has asked, I put cross references on and they don't seem to stay there. And I yeah. think what's happening is probably they're using the, the chapter window to make yes. the change. Yeah, absolutely. So the view options in the repertory module uh, are in two places. And they are, so when you open a chapter, they are inside the chapter here. The I in any part of the program represents view modules, uh, um, the view options. And so whether it's in the clipboard here or inside a chapter or outside in the repertory. So the, the thing to remember is that if you are um, selecting view options from within a window, whether it's the clipboard or um, a chapter in any repertory, those view options will only apply to that window. Um, so if I was to, you know, say I want to see remedies, um, this will apply only here. If I open another clipboard and um, let's say add a rubric. Oh, it does apply to the other clipboard as well. Okay, so this is a good thing. Um, I never have those turned on, so. Um, you know, this is not something that I would know, but um, apparently, so you, you can change your view options from within the clipboard and they will apply to every clipboard. Uh, but if you change your view op options from within a section or a chapter of a repertory, um, then they do not apply to another chapter that you might open. And as you can see, the new chapter that you open doesn't have the remedies turned on, but the one that I um, changed over here has the remedies turned on. In order for your view options to apply to the entire repertory module, you actually have to change your view settings from the eye that's inside the repertory module, um, but outside the chapter. So when I do that, and you can see it still says no remedies. When I do this here, you can see that all the chapters that I open will now have that option um, turned on. Um, so for example, now if I turn my cross references on, 
they are now on. And Rupali, somebody actually asked that question as well. Karen asked, please explain the rubric that has a zero on the remedy count and no plus indicating sub rubrics. Um, right. she, she cannot make the synonym icon function, but this is how you would actually um, find what you need yeah. for a rubric that has actually no remedies in it without right. sub rubrics. So when you see a remedy count that says zero, but it indicates or does not indicate that there are sub rubrics in that rubric with the plus sign. So actually it makes no sense because you can't use that rubric because there, there are zero remedies, but also there are no sub rubrics. That rubric is there because it's a placeholder or it talks about that quality or characteristic um, that appears in other rubrics that are similar to it. So bending head backward ameliorates um, is actually a quality or a modality that appears somewhere else in the repertory. And the only way you're going to know that, so the zero and the lack of a plus sign tells you that there are cross references for this rubric that do have remedies that are active rubrics or sub rubrics. And the way that you can use that rubric with the zero remedies is to turn your cross references on and see what is another rubric that mimics that quality or modality or characteristic and find that cross reference. So here actually, um, the rubric that has that quality in it or that modality is impaired bending head backward meliorates. And so when I click that, it takes me to that actual rubric and there is a remedy in it, fluoric acid, and you can use that. So if you actually wanted bending head backwards ameliorates, this is the one that you would use um, under hearing, impaired, and then bending head backward ameliorates. That's where you would find it. Um, so as you can see now, I changed my view options to indicate remedies and turn my cross references on. And now, um, every chapter that I open will have that. It will have um, cross references and remedies turned on. So you have to just be careful that you, are, so if I do this here now, for example, and turn my cross references off, you see that now just for this particular chapter, um, I have turned everything off, but it does not apply if I was to close this and open a new chapter, then it, you know, those, those view options would still be turned on that I had turned on from the, the settings, from the global settings um, and not from the local settings. I think it helps to think about it that way. These are local settings and these are global settings. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Rupali. Sure. Um, we have a vital quest question. Okay. All right. Uh, would you be able to go over the opening steps of inserting text in vital quest? Um, there's a question she doesn't automatic. It doesn't seem to automatically process. I know I've had to tell several people that you ha really have to hit the return key to process the text. Um, okay. Sometimes well, it does not highlight sensation words either. Okay. So, um, so here I have, we'll just use the case and I'm just going to do a command C, um, and I will go in here in VQ and I'm going to just do a command V and I didn't have to hit enter. So when I just did the command V to paste it or a control V in a PC, um, the, the red word, the words highlight up that the program thinks are sensation words or keywords. And it already picks them up. Um, it picks up the sensation words and put, puts them on the right-hand side box. Now, obviously, you know, the program is a machine and so it's, it's an algorithm, but you can see that there is a whole list of words here. You can choose the words that you thought were significant in the intake. 
Um, and, you know, not, not everything has to go in, but, you know, it's up to you. Um, and it's really interesting how many, um, how sensitive the algorithm is and how many words it'll pick up. Um, and, and, and you can do that. You, you should be able to copy from uh, your interview notes and be able to paste into the program uh, directly and it should pick up all the words. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why it's not doing that. Um, unless you're writing, so if you are, if you're writing something in, um, so I'm going to X out of here. Um, maybe if you're, you see, if I'm writing it in, then nothing is happening, but I have to hit enter uh, or return and then it will activate. Maybe that might be the issue, but if you copy and paste, it should, it should do it automatically. Okay, wonderful. Um, Karen is wondering, how does the synonym icon work? She, um, she had been trying to use it in repertory module, um, mm -hmm. but if you could show her how the, the best way to use that, it really doesn't have much to do with repertory module. It's all about global search. So yes. we can show that. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go here. So um, the synonym uh, icon actually helps you find uh, synonyms for words that you might be using in global search. So if I say fear, um, you know, you could uh, look at the synonym icon to see what else it will give you. Um, and you see there are a lot of synonyms here for fear. Um, my, and you could select some of these, you know, um, but the issue that I have with the synonym um, feature is that the synonyms that you get are those from a standard dictionary. And um, there is no, <clears throat> nobody yet has written a homeopathic dictionary um, because we, as we learn the repertory and we work with Materia Medica and patients, we understand that uh, homeopathic synonyms are not the same as regular language synonyms. And so in, in, for example, I mean, if I wanted to put, if I wanted to repertorize um, I don't know, fear of robbers, uh, let's say, uh, as a rubric. Um, I would put fear, um, I would put dreams, uh, I would put um, anxiety within four words of robbers. And in a, a regular dictionary, fear, dream, and anxiety are not synonyms for each other. But in homeopathy, if, if there's something that excites a strong reaction within you, you're going to see that as an anxiety or as a fear, and you might even see it in your dreams. And so homeopathically, those are synonyms or can be used as synonyms to look at that quality and to elicit rubrics that relate to that. Um, and so you can see here, there's, you know, obviously you're going to see a lot of dreams of robbers, fears of robbers, anxiety about robbers. Sometimes you can even have delusions uh, about robbers. Um, delusion, I think I would also put delusion in if there was something really strong um, at that level in a patient. But these are not true synonyms linguistically. Um, so for me, that it's helpful sometimes, but not always. Um, and the way in which it is helpful is you use it here in your search bar, in your global search bar, when you are looking for a particular characteristic or you're searching something up. Um, I mean, one place where I feel that it's useful, for example, is, um, you know, and as you work with it more and more, I mean, homesickness 
um, I don't know what, what the program will say, but actually it, it doesn't find anything for homesickness. Um, let's see, it's going round and round, no. Let's see if it finds it for, because I was gonna say um, nostalgia and then we can see what comes up. No, actually. Um, and so, I mean, it can it can be helpful or, yeah, it doesn't find it. So um, what you really use it for is the, is the global search here to find um, synonyms for words that you're looking for that represent an idea or a characteristic in your patient. Um, it's not useful in the repertory module, but what you can do is, um, you know, if you're looking for similar things in the repertory, then your best bet is actually cross references. Um, and so, um, for example, um, let's say I'm looking for anxiety and then I'm looking for, let's say, no. Um, Let's go back to, I think fear might be an easier way. And interesting, okay. So there are no cross references here for fear of robbers, um, but you can see if you look at mind fear of financial ruin, then you can see that something similar would also be fear of poverty. Or um, if he's scared of saying something wrong, you can also see that there, there are two other similar rubrics. So if you're looking for similarities in the way that you would look for synonyms, I assume you're looking for synonyms because you're looking for similar things within the repertory, then your best bet would actually be cross-references because um, those would tell you similar rubrics to the one that you're looking at. Um, and here um, you would use synonyms, either homeopathic or linguistic for actually a global search uh, when you're searching the repertory or the Materia Medica. Is that, um, I hope that that's helpful. If you have other questions relating to that, just please ask. Great. Um, going back to the vital quest, mm -hmm. um, there, oh, Karen said, thank you. So that, that sure. could really yeah, great. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, so going back to vital quest, um, the box is on the right, Yes. Indicating the sensation words. Um, mm -hmm. She ticks them. Yeah. Clicks result and gets a blank result. It moves into the results, but doesn't put any text in the boxes. I'm not quite sure. Um, show the pie chart. I'm not sure why it's, let's go here. Oh. Oh, maybe there isn't much. Um, it should still give me a result, even if it, it, there's- It should. Hmm. That's, that's odd. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, maybe reload the program. I am reloading. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just do um, what I did before and see. And we'll just choose a couple of things and I'll try the quick result. So there is a quick result. Here we go. Okay, so right. perhaps Carol, you need to reload your program 
quit SHS and restart it. Sometimes if that ever it. happens, just uh, reload your program. And now um, you, you know, it will even bring back if you don't save, it will bring back your work. And so, um, you know, yeah. Okay, great. And then you could also, I mean, of course, if you do the whole thing, then it will can see this is arachnida. It's 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 pointing towards arachnida and then plants. There's actually four different families. Um, and then you know, if you want, you can go deeper and it will tell you even the remedy level. And Carol's good. She's going to try that reloading. Okay. Okay. Great. okay good. Um, and so somebody is asking if you could please demonstrate. Yeah. Uh, repertorizing using both the repertory and the materia medica together, bringing both both the results sure. onto the clipboard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so actually. So what we can also do is um, actually let's go through the case very quickly. Uh, I think we have time and I'll summarize it. So um, this was um, a woman that I saw three years ago. Um, she worked as a domestic worker um, and um, was originally from the Philippines and uh, had come over with a, a family that was an expatriated to the US uh, for a few years. She came over with them and um, she would get these intense migraines uh, for almost a week and she would be completely incapacitated and throwing up and couldn't even tolerate water um, and she would just lie in bed. Um, and this would happen every month or every other month um and eventually the family the lady of the family she she brought her to me and said you know can you can you talk to her and see if you can uh, take care of her migraine issue and obviously because she couldn't eat or drink and she would be throwing up the whole time for these three or four days she would get really weak after and um and so um in general she was very quiet and um, retiring and shy, didn't speak much at all. There was also a language barrier. Um, and so I, I couldn't get a whole lot of information from her. Um, the one thing I did get was that she gets this migraine, you know, she throws up, um, throws up again, she can move. Um, and she just, she says, she just lies in bed and cries and prays. And she's really very sad. Um, and I said, why is she sad? And it turns out that her mom had passed a while ago and her brother passed while she was in service. She couldn't go back. Um, and uh, he was relatively young. He was a younger brother and she's 39. She was 39. So I guess he was in his early thirties. Um, and she sees him in her dreams. Um, and so usually she's busy with work, but when she's incapacitated with the migraine, she just lies in bed um, and cries and misses them a lot. And turns out she was really, really homesick. Um, and so I asked her to tell me a little bit about herself. And I said, okay, when, what, what else is going on? What kind of a person are you? And it was, um, so she said, you know, it, she was really only still thinking of being away from them. So she said that in general, um, if there's an emergency in the family, she doesn't get to find out and um, they don't tell her because she's so far away and she would get worried. Um, and then she finds out from someone else and she gets really, really angry um, and she stops eating. And I said, um, um, she would call the lady that she worked for, um, Akka, and which means elder sister. Um, and so she said, I don't talk to anyone. I just 
withdraw into my room when I'm really, really angry. And I said, well, what if you were with your family? And then she said, well, if I was with my family, I would go really shout at them. And, um, you know, if, if, if the anger comes out, then I become fine. I'm, if I'm able to shout and let it all out, it's fine. But if I'm not able to do it, it feels like I can breathe properly. And it's better if the anger comes out. And then I asked her about the migraine a little bit more. And she said that um, the headache, the migraine actually always comes before her period. Um, and however, this year she didn't have a period at all. Um, and she said, if this week I get the, the migraine, then the next week the, the menses start and then she feels really good after um, the headache goes away. And as she says, the blood comes and then I feel nice and comfortable. Um, she also feels like the headache. It feels like there's heat coming out of her eyes and her ears. And once she vomits, she also feels better. Um, she also has some other symptoms with like these purpura on her legs, which come before the menses. Um, most of her um, other, I mean, she, her whole hand one time turned purple because she got bit by a hamster. Um, the spots on her legs are also purple. Um, and both of these, um, the spots and the migraine come the week before um, she's expecting her period. So it's a short case. They're, they're, you know, we couldn't get a lot of stories or delusion, but um, I mean, it's, it's good to repetize. So, um, you know, we can, we can talk about, so what I'm gonna do here is in general now with the with this program because I'm used to this program I tend to go um, you know let's I don't know if you guys will be able to see because I'm on my uh, laptop that has the smaller screen but I was gonna be gonna try and see if I can put both so that we can um, have them side by side. But let me know if you can't see and then um, if it becomes too tiny and then we can just go back and forth. But um, if we just, and I'm so I'm not going to try and um, replicate what I did two years ago with the case, but it's a nice, it's a nice thing to have in the background just, just to put some rubrics on a clipboard. Um, and so we can try different things. Cause so I would really want to know if there's um, a rubric for migraine before, I know there's a rubric for um, headache before menses, but you know, the, you could look at different things. You could do a search for different things. Um, and you can see here, this is menses with migraine. Uh, and that's coming up in the reliable rep. Um, head pain, general migraine, menses before or after, but there's only one remedy, so I wouldn't choose that. Um, let's see if the complete, there's anything. And these are all very uh, small rubrics. So um, then I would look at head, pain within four words. Yeah, four words. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just, um, if, if you don't know how global search works, then basically um, you can put a collection of words together that um, indicate what you're looking for. And the program will search both the repertory for rubrics and it will search your Materia Medica for um, uh, that characteristic that you're looking for or that symptom or the modality. Um, and in this case, let me try making it a bit more pointed. Uh, and so now I'm saying, show me all the rubrics that have head pain within four words of menses, within two words of before. I didn't even actually need to put 
two uh, between menses and before, uh, but we can try and see what comes. And you can see, so when you do something like that, um, you will get two results, repertory and reference library, and all your repertory rubrics are on your left-hand side in the first tab. And then when you go to the reference library, um, it's going to search for, so while it does that, let's put, let's put some rubrics on here. So headache in general, menses before headache in general. So we can put, you know, and I just hit um, enter or return and it puts the rubric in, it creates a clipboard, opens a clipboard and puts the rubric in there. Um, there's also a rubric for abdomen and this is more about dysmenorrhea. So, and it's a single remedy rubric. So we're not going to use that. Um, let's see if it was able to find a reference works result. That's okay. So um, the other thing that was quite obvious in this case is that um, she feels homesick. And so we can look for a homesick rubric. And you can again see that there are several rubrics, um, but the most regular one is homesickness. Um, and I would probably use that. Um, there are other homesickness rubrics in throat, stomach, chest, and sleep, but I really need the mind uh, rubric. And so we can put that in there. Um, it would also be interesting to see um, if there is a homesickness rubric um, with migraines, but I don't know that she specifically said that. Um, there is uh, something here which, you know, which shows that she feels better if her anger comes out. She feels better after vomiting. She feels better once her period starts. Uh, and so there is better after discharge. There is, um, and so we can look, we can look for that. Um, and we can say discharge within three words of ameliorates. And let's see. So this, I mean, the other thing is, if you just hit enter, it will override your earlier search. And um, if you use the plus sign, then it will create a new search and you can keep your old search as well. Um, and since we are talking about here, we're talking about a mental discharge, we're talking about vomiting, and then we're also talking about menstrual discharge. All of these discharges make her better. So I would probably look in generalities because this is a general symptom. Um, generalities, discharges, secretions, ameliorate. I think that's a good one. So we can put that in there. Um, and then let's see, uh, maybe we, see if we can get a reference uh, reference result for this discoloration or spots before menses. Uh, let's see. So discoloration within three words of, let's try purple and see and extremities. So let's see now, extremities section and purple. Yes, okay, so I really did need to just, so what I'll do here is we were trying to do uh, extremities and discoloration 
purple within three words of MCs. Let's see. No result found. Okay. Uh, spots. In fact, I will do a synonym here. And let's try that search. Okay, there are six remedies. Uh, and so what we can do is I will just, actually I should open the patient first that we were here, view. And here we go. And then I'm going to go back. So I opened the patient and I opened the repetrization, the clipboard. Now I'll go back to my results. And um, we looked for this quality that she gets these big purple spots on her legs the week before her menses. Um, and, you know, it's unlikely that there would be any, although there are actually, there are repertory results, but because we, this whole exercise was to show how you would have, um, materia medica results and repertory results on the same clipboard, I'm actually not going to look for a rubric that um, fits that uh, symptom. I'm going to take my reference library result and add it to the clipboard. And you see it says new rubric added. Um, and then we can also uh, do a more complex materia medica search for example, um, homesickness in the same, and I'm using my space bar to uh, cycle through those options. Homesickness in the same remedy as um, head, headache, uh, headache, let's say in the same remedy as headache, within two words of menses in the same remedy as mm, charges within three words of ameliorates. And let's see if that gives us a reference library result. Oh, 127 remedies. So I'm going to add that to our clipboard and it says new rubric added. And so now when I go to our clipboard, you can see that the first three uh, rubrics are reliable repertory rubrics. And the next two rubrics are are Materia Medica searches. And in fact, it's very nice that you can actually see the search. So discoloration or spots within three words of menses, and then homesickness in the same remedy as headache within two words of menses in the same remedy as discharges ameliorate. Um, and you can see that we have a result here. Um, you know, you can now look at this result and see if, depending on what sense you got, if you if you're going to work with kingdoms, you want to see if there if if there are any plant remedies or animal remedies or mineral remedies, or if you had a feeling uh, of uh, the patient, or if you thought they were in a particular family, you can do those kinds of analyses here. If you really would like to go with some of the remedies that come up uh, strongly in the repetrization, I mean, clearly petroleum here comes up, but let's say you've not used this remedy before, um, you know, you can look at the remedy in your reference library. Rupali, while we're on that topic, we did have a question. If you could explain the navigation between the clipboard to the Materia Medica. Um, we have a, a user who's um, saying that when she tries to, when she goes to the Materia Medica, um, she can't land on the book that she wants. So there, there are several ways you can either- The put book that, book that she top, wants. Fatak, for instance. 
And so okay. you can either do like there on the left pane and find the book, or you can make that your default. Right. Uh, and and so in, exactly. And so in fact, uh, when you, when I go from petroleum and I say show remedy in reference library, it will bring up petroleum on the left. And in fact, if you have set up your favorite references at the top, then it's going to show the petroleum uh, entry in those references first. So I have Vermeulen, Morrison, and Fatak, I think from an earlier. Uh, so I will show you that. Yeah, so I have, Mer Mer excuse me, Vermeulen, Morrison, Shankaran Soul of Remedies and Fatak set up as my top four references. So um, when I go here, um, and you can see then that Vermeulen, Morrison, and Fatak are the top three out of the four. I guess uh, Dr. Shankaran does not have an entry for petroleum and Soul of Remedies. And so my top three show up, and then it goes by alphabetical order. Um, if you now wanted, like, for example, if I now wanted to read uh, a particular author that maybe wasn't in my top three or top five, um, and so now let's say I want to read Shankaran, then if I just type, um, oh, it's typed it up here. So if I go back to the petroleum reference, and it's now actually gone. So let's say if I did that, if I went back to petroleum, you can see that the top three references, it took me to the Vermeulen reference first. Uh, but while you're in there, if you want to look for other references, um, you can type the first three letters of whatever you're interested in, and it should, it should bring those up as well. So those are the two ways that you would look for. Um, one is to set up your favorite references, and then the other would be to just type the first three letters of the reference you're interested in. Um, and it should bring that up. So if we go back here, um, you have, as you said, you have a combined clipboard with Materia Medica and repertory rubrics. Um, and then there are, you know, various analyses possible. Um, you could also, um, you know, um, I'm not sure, I've not tried this, but um, you could, um, we could try, but I want to show you the elimination first. So let's say you decide that um, the discharges ameliorates is really a very crucial part of the case because you can see it at different levels that um, she feels better after a discharge. Then you could do an elimination um, using that as your key um, symptom or modality actually and then see what remedies um, show up as possible. And in the graph, it will limit by that particular rubric. And then now you can see if you make that rubric primary within those three rubrics, then it, there's a different selection of remedies that comes up. And um, you can do that kind of analysis. What I was wondering was um, if it is possible to eliminate by a materia medica rubric. And I guess it is. Um, so now, <clears throat> oh, but it won't let me eliminate by a materia medica rubric alone. I can do this. But it did. I saw that it- It did, got, here. Yeah. Maybe I just, maybe my hand slipped, but mm -hmm. here. So you can eliminate also, let's say, by your materia medica rubric. Um, and if you, if you see your graph now, 
you can see only four remedies because the rubric that we're crossing with has six remedies in it. So the maximum possible number of remedies you can see with this elimination will be six. In this case, we see four remedies that appear in this rubric, but also, you know, and, and then how that plays out in the others. Um, so it's actually also possible to eliminate with your material. If you think your material medical rubric is the most crucial one, you can use that to do your elimination. And then you want to, if you know, once you want to remove that, then you just click your filter button and clear the applied filter. You get your original uh, repertorization with all five rubrics. Okay, so is there no any other, questions? No other questions for the moment. If anyone has any last questions, do please put them in Q&A or chat. Yeah. Okay, okay. good. Um, so uh, that uh, is our forum for today. Thank you for all your questions. And um, I enjoyed showing the program to you. Um, we are going to be taking a break for the holidays. And Lucy and I and Marcelo and Anna will be back next month in January. I think our next training is going to be January 14th. Um, and so um, if you have any thoughts or ideas or parts of the program that you would like us to show you in greater depth, um, do write to us uh, in this month that we are going to be away. And um, we'd be happy to um, bring that up on January 14th at the next open forum. Um, we also want to wish you very, very happy uh, holidays. Um, stay safe and healthy and um, uh, a wonderful new year. Our best wishes for 2022. Lucy, do you want to have, do you want to say anything before? Oh, just happy holidays, everybody. Thanks so much. And we appreciate your attendance. Uh, we appreciate your support. Thank you yes. so much. Don't work too hard. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Take care and we'll see you in January. Bye-bye.